Marky Mark's Woodshop 101. Well, good morning. I'm Marky Mark, and this is the Woodshop. Today we're going to be replacing the blades on the joiner. And that's a pretty easy, quick process. <laughs> Mark's Woodshop 101. Well, hi there. One of our little shop chores we have to do is to replace the, the uh, blades on the joiner, which is overdue. I picked this up locally for like, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks. It's a no-name uh, Asian unit, which pretty much covers 70, 80% of the uh, units you're going to buy with a name anyway. But uh, one end of the joiner blades, they were pretty well chewed up. And I did a little quick sharpening to get it in production, move the fence forward away from the uh, area where it's chewed up. But we have new blades, and I'm going to be installing them. Uh, so to change the blades on the joiner, you only need a couple few tools. They're uh, bolted in. Of course, you need new planer blades, and you need whatever size uh, wrench that holds them in. In my case, it's a 10 millimeter, and you need some kind of jig to get them in a proper height. There's a lot of fancy things out there. This one happens to be for my planer that came with it. So there are devices that look like this, and you can spend 50 or 100 dollars on that particular item. However, I use an old-fashioned square because the idea is I get them the height of the outfeed table and really all you need is an extended flat surface so this will do the trick. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug the juice, get the fence out of the way and normally I might remove the guard I've got a little spring issue and uh, it would flop in front so I might take that off too but in this case I'm not going to. So now it's just time to unbolt. So I've set the new blade in. Here's one of the old ones. This particular unit only has two cutters in it. And I could probably save this to resharpen it. And what I'm going to do now is the blade has to be centered and it has to be parallel with the bed. And I'm just going to eyeball that, snug up my bolts a little bit, and then come back with the flat edge to get that better. second blade removed and something I didn't show you this uh, piece comes out and there's a groove in there blow out your sawdust before you put your blades back in um, I have a question for you 
So, well, first off, why do you blow out the sawdust? And, um, so we're putting, I'm putting the blades in, and I've never done this before, and I'm already feeling unconfident, even though I've read the manual and I've done all that. How do I know that it's actually, I put the blades in right and it's doing the right job? Well, the first time is a little intimidating. You know, first time for anything. Interesting, the other side was spring-loaded. This is not, so that's going to cause me a little problem. However, when you're cutting, the blade always cuts uh, to the work. Even on a table saw, a router, no matter what it is, the blade's going to cut to you. So, as you can see, the profile of the blade, it's angled at one side. The thinner angle is where it's going to cut towards, so it's going to spin like this. Okay. And you need to know that because there's no manual. You just get the blades. That's it. Well, I meant the manual with the machine. Well, yeah. I don't. In this case, I didn't get a manual. Yeah. So, but that's the way but things you know, cut. A lot of manuals and stuff are online now, too. Yeah. Some of the jigs I showed you earlier are magnetic that will actually hold the blade, which would be nice in this particular case, again, because this side's not spring-loaded like the other side. So, I'll have to compensate for that. So we ran into a small problem on this side. Underneath of the cutter blades on each side, the machine should have a couple of springs that pushes up on the blade so you can, uh, it facilitates tightening it. Instead, it dropped down below where we want it, so that's bad. I tried to uh, make a couple of springs out of a, a pen uh, spring, but that didn't work for me. So I just cut a sliver of uh, cardboard and stuff down there. So. The only thing it's got to do is hold it upright and compress just a little bit so we can get the proper height. And that worked fine for me and I'll uh, get some springs for the next time. So this one's a little high. It's a little bit harder to adjust than the other one because i got to compress some cardboard. And I really don't want to push on that sharp blade or use metal. I got to compress it just a little bit along all along the edge. And I think I just got this end, so I'm gonna snug that up a little bit and then come back and get the other end and check this end. thing we just did was put the fence back on and squared it back up because of course uh, the whole object of the joiner is to give you one good edge and it needs to be square so that's how we achieve that. Um, well I have a question for you so now that we've got the blade on and you've got the fence all squared up and everything else like that how do you make sure how do you know for sure that your wood is being squared properly? or giving you the jointed edge? Well, obviously your machine needs to be set up first and your beds need to be parallel. The blades need to be at equal heights, which we just did. And we checked that with a straight edge going across the uh, bed and the blades at every, you know, all along the blade. Uh, so I know it's even and at the proper height. And you can use the outfeed table to make some adjustments. Normally you don't adjust the outfeed table, you'll adjust the infeed table as to how much you want to cut off. But you can use the outfeed table just as a setup thing uh, to get it nice and even with the blades. So this should be nice and even. And that's probably all the adjustments really that are on the machine. I mean if your bed is not parallel there's probably a problem with the casting. 
this sets on both of these beds set on another cast iron pyramid and that needs to be machined so they are parallel so if they're not you got a uh, problem with the foundation and not that it's not repairable it be a pain in the butt you shouldn't have bought that machine to begin with and but that's not something that's going to happen anywhere down the pipe you know the casting is not going to move well like this one we got uh, kind of at a bargain deal and just kind of fell into our laps and I checked all that and so if there was something wrong with the uh, bottom of the joiner there what would you do just grind it down well that's an option yeah in this particular case this is a pretty cheap unit and it's actually not sitting on cast iron, it's sitting on some steel. It looks like it's rather thick gauge, but yeah, I would have to file, do some filing or shimming or something to get them parallel, but again, that's something that just really doesn't happen. You know, so, you could drop the machine or fall over in transit or something like that could damage it. So we get the board through there, and how do we check that the board has been done properly? Oh, we have an array of measurement devices in the shop to ensure that we have a square edge assuming that the bench is on there let's just find that out right now shall we Actually, I do need a couple of adjustments. The fence has to come forward about a sixteenth of an inch, and I do need to drop the outfield table down just the ever so slightest amount. So, in trying to move the fence forward, I noticed there's a little bit of movement on the end feed table. That's bad, so I gotta find out uh, what's going on there, and I suspect. There's probably some loose bolts underneath, but first I'm going to go do finish what I got up top here. So, there we go. There's our test cut. You can see it's square. There's no light anywhere. And we know the fence is on good. I just adjusted the outfeed table just a skosh. And we're pretty much done that operation. Now all I have to do is go underneath and figure out what bolts. So my, I figured out that uh, they've got basically dovetails that hold the casting onto the base. So I just made a minor adjustment and that took the play out of the table. So the last thing I want to do is, since I've dropped and made adjustments, have new blades, it's taking off just a little bit more than what I want. A lot of our projects are kind of small. It takes off a pretty good amount, uh, which is okay for rough lumber, but a lot of our work is a little bit more delicate than rough lumber. So. I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit less, adjusting my in feed table. And we'll test it. That's good, I can tell by the sound, it's taking off a lot less. And we're pretty much done. If you have any questions, uh, that was kind of a uh, unique way of putting on the blades. I've just done it uh, quite a few times and figured out, you know, never having jigs or anything, how to make it work for me. Okay, there's not too much. There's a belt for the machine. You want to make sure it's tightened. You want to periodically uh, check the adjustment on your blades and sharpen them. Uh, don't get one of these. Uh, the best way to sharpen it is uh, I'm going to make a jig where it's basically a piece of wood that will hold the blades. I'm going to cut a 45 for each of the blade. That way I can do.
do the scary sharp thing over sandpaper with both of the blades simultaneously. Uh, the last thing I like to do is uh, clean the table off. I've got a rough scruffy kind of pad that'll get all the uh, whatever gunk happens to be on there, maybe a little surface rust or whatever, and uh, keep it smooth and clean. And then put paste wax on it. That does a couple of things. One, it protects the uh, cast iron, which is very prone to rust just by humidity. And also, uh, it makes the uh, surface nice and slippery so your work is easier to slide across. And don't forget to like us and subscribe and leave a comment and all that good stuff. We love to hear your comments. Marky Mark, extraordinaire!